Junkyard LS, Junkyard Supercharger. The perfect combination, right? In this video, I'll show you what happens when we install a little V6 supercharger on a larger, more powerful V8. This M90 supercharger was original equipment in a Pontiac Grand Prix GTP. You know, the 3800 Series 2 V6 motors. This supercharger came from my buddy Brandon over at LS4 King. Thanks for the hookup, Brandon. And using a custom adapter plate, I was able to install the M90 on a Holley high ram intake manifold. Other than the high ram, our 4.8 liter test motor was actually pretty mild. It featured a torque cam from Brian Tooley Racing, a set of stock 706 heads with a valve spring upgrade, and forged internals. Well, forged pistons. Long ago, we upgraded the 4.8 with JE forged pistons and Gen 4 rods. So this bottom end had nothing to fear from that little M90. But the question is, how well does an M90 supercharger originally designed to feed a 240 horsepower V6 work on an LS? Before we get to the results, I thought you guys might have some questions about how I did this, about the adapter plate and maybe the front drive assembly, basically how I did everything to get the M90 supercharger on this combination. So I'm going to do a quick walk around before we get the results and see how much power that big M90 had to offer. Drive assembly, obviously we had the factory 3.8 inch pulley on the M90 supercharger. But if you'll notice, and we've got no alternator there, it's just kind of hanging out, being all lonely and sad, not being part of the group. But if you take a look at the whole assembly, it's running kind of what the factory did. It goes around the crank pulley the same, the water pump pulley, power steering. We've left out the alternator. But as you can see, we're using the factory spring-loaded tensioner to tension this whole thing. It goes over to the idler, up to the supercharger. Stand back maybe so you guys can see the whole thing. And not that it makes any difference, but here is the belt that I use to make this thing work. Not that you guys would duplicate this because let's face it, there's no alternator there. Now we might be able to bring this belt you know, around the alternator if it's in place, although I didn't think it would have much wrap. You guys could probably figure out your own thing and make it work. On the adapter plate, I'm gonna show you some photos along with that. This is what allowed us to bolt the supercharger on. Now, I mounted the plate on the high ram, and it worked out pretty well. And then mounted the supercharger to the plate. The critical thing, obviously, was getting the, this pulley lined up with the crank and the rest of the pulleys. But, you know, I had that laser sight deal, and we tried that a little bit. In the end, I just used a straight edge. I used this bar over here. See, just use that, line it up down there, line it up up here, make sure that they're the same and it all worked out really well. I've run a ton of runs on it and had no problems. Got the factory mass air and throttle body combination there. I made sure to hook up the factory bypass valve so that was working. That plate, as you can see from the photo, has an opening for the discharge of the blower and the bypass valve so it's bypassing that air while it's idling. If you got any more questions, let me know in the comments. This thing was running 80 pound injectors, not that we needed it because we weren't making very much power. And we were running on, all of this was run on pump gas on 91 octane. So now that we've taken a look at that stuff, let's get to the results. could run the M90 supercharger on our 4.8 liter test motor, we had to run the motor naturally aspirated. Now I always like to provide a baseline so that I can find out whatever the gain was worth. In this case it was an M90 supercharger, so we need the NA numbers before we before we get the boosted numbers. So equipped with that Brian Tooley cam and the high ram intake, our 4.8 liter produced 375 horsepower, so not too bad, and 344 foot-pounds of torque. Again, not too bad, although this combination, if you look at the power curve and if you look at the parts that we chose for, it's hardly optimized. And unfortunately, 
That was by design. So you guys can blame me. I mean, why on earth, and let me know in the comments, why on earth would I combine a low RPM torque cam with a high RPM, high RAM intake? I mean, what's with that? That's a terrible combination, right? Well, it is, and it isn't. You see, I chose those specifically for a reason. On the low RPM torque cam, I wanted to make sure that this 4.8 didn't make a ton of power. I purposely didn't want it to rev really high and make a lot of horsepower. I wanted to give that little M90 supercharger a fighting chance. I knew it was limited in its capacity to supply airflow. I'm already asking it to go from a 240 horsepower V6 up to a much more powerful V8. So I didn't want to take that even one step further by modifying the V8 to make it even more powerful. So next question, why would I use a high RAM then? I mean, that's a high RPM intake. Why not use an intake that's designed for low RPM like the torque cam? Well, that's another good read. That's another good question. But, and let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? Why did I choose that? The obvious answer is it made life easy. I mean, the high RAM was a big open common plenum. So all I had to do to install the supercharger on that high RAM intake was make a simple plate. I mean, I'm no whiz when it comes to fabrication. I'm pretty good on the dyno, the fabrication, not my strong suit, but making a simple plate, milling out a hole for the discharge on the blower, which Steve Brule actually did. He walked back and I had a couple of questions. He said, okay, let me do this. And he just made it, made it happen. So we had a hole for the discharge of the blower and we had a hole for the bypass valve, but that's it. Other than that, I just had to mount the plate to the high ram, pretty easy to mark and locate, get the plate situated, and then mount the blower on the plate. The critical thing was lining up the pulley so that it lined up with all the rest of them so it wouldn't pitch belts while I was trying to run it. But even that wasn't insurmountable. So that's why I chose the high rim. It made life easy. That's why I chose the low RPM cam to not make a ton of power and give that M90 a fighting chance. So 375 horsepower, 344 foot pounds. Let's find out how well this thing did after we added boost. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Here's what everyone's been waiting for. This is our NA power output of the 4.8 liter. We showed you how we put this baby on, how we put the supercharger on. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we add a little boost from the M90 supercharger and boom, that's right, we lost a bunch of power. So we didn't so much put a blower on there as we put a restrictor plate on there. This thing, the best that this thing could muster was 1.1 or 1.2 pounds of boost down low and through the rest of it it just had a falling boost curve not that it had a whole bunch to spare to begin with but installing the m90 supercharger from the four, from the 3.8 liter v6 onto your 4.8 liter is probably not a good idea at least not with one supercharger makes me wonder what would happen with two superchargers but that's a test for another day. So if we take a look at this, the power output dropped dramatically, obviously when we put the supercharger on, and there are a couple of reasons for that. But right now, let me know in the comments. What do you think? Why did we lose power? Do you think we had a big boost leak somewhere? Was the bypass valve open? Do you think we not had, didn't have enough timing in it? All of this was run on pump gas, and we basically ran full timing. We ran full timing on both of these combinations. When I say full timing, I mean NA timing. We ran like 29 degrees of total timing on these, and there's no reason we couldn't. And you know why we couldn't? Because we didn't have a supercharged motor. There was basically no boost present. We had one pound down low, but even then we were making less power with a little bit of positive pressure. So let me know in the comments, why do you think that this combination would actually lose power putting a supercharger on an NA combination? I'll let you in a little secret. There are a couple of things. One, obviously if you noticed in some of the photos, when we ran the NA motor, we actually ran it with an electric water pump and no accessories. And we ran accessories with this because it was required with the supercharger for me to run this drive assembly. But if you take a look at our other video where I compared or I, where I tested the effect of the loss of the accessories, the video's right here, take a look at that, you see there's a little bit of power there. So yeah, there was some of the power was from the parasitic loss associated with driving. We had a power steering pump. The water pump obviously takes some. There was no alternator there and there was no alternator load in the, in the past test anyway. But the big thing 
was actually the parasitic loss associated with driving the supercharger itself. You see, for that supercharger to supply the amount of air that it did even to make this power output, which was with the supercharger, we produced a whopping 314 horsepower and 297 foot-pounds of torque with that supercharger at essentially no boost. I mean, I think it was about half a pound or four-tenths of a pound out at the power peak. So we made less power with the supercharger, and the reason that it made less is the supercharger simply didn't have enough airflow to supply the airflow needs of our motor. Spun at that, uh, at that blower speed, the supercharger could not keep up with the airflow demand of the motor. So in essence, we put a restrictor plate on this thing. Now, how could we fix that? Well, one way obviously is to spin the blower faster relative to the motor. That way the blower is supplying more airflow than it is in this, in this particular instance. So if we put a 3.6 or a 3.4 or a 3.2 blower pulley on there, we might be able to raise this thing back up, at least back up to the NA power output. And maybe if we supplied enough boost, if there was a big enough change in the airflow, we'd have to do that as a percentage calculation and figure out how much we had to gain here and how much capacity the M90 really had we could maybe adjust this thing up and make a little bit more power by spinning it faster. I think the obvious answer is a bigger blower or maybe two of these blowers and maybe some inlet restriction things that we could do to, to help things out a little bit. But I'm gonna take a look at a comparison next. This makes for an interesting comparison. If you take a look at this, this is actually a stock 3.8 liter 3800 series two motor equipped with that same M90 supercharger and the same pulley. Now I'm not certain about the size of the crank pulley, so if anybody's out there, let me know in the comments what size the factory crank pulley is on a 3800 Series 2 supercharged motor like in a Grand Prix or Buick Regal, any of those, because I'm not sure how that compares to what's on the LS. But as you can see, this combination produced slightly under 300 horsepower, 298 horsepower, and 304 foot-pounds of torque. So. Basically, this is kind of a 300 horsepower motor and 300 foot-pounds of torque, and that's how much airflow that supercharger, that M90 supercharger, was designed to support. So with it spinning at that speed, on a 3800 on this little V6, obviously we had boost present because it was supplying more air than that particular motor could use. So it was pr providing boost on our bigger V8, it was not providing any boost. But this is about a, you know, 300 or so horsepower blower spinning at that speed, and this kind of confirms that. I know with our, if you if you take if we take a look at the power curve on our 4.8 liter equipped with the M90 supercharger, you'll see it made a little over 300 because we didn't have any boost. We were using all of it, and it started out with uh, more power, obviously. So it made 314 horsepower out at 5,700 RPM. But it kind of goes to show you that M90 supercharger with that 3.8 inch pulley is kind of about a 300 horsepower deal. Um, even obviously the LS heads and stuff flow a lot better than those V6 heads, but you know, we got a 300 horsepower blower with that pulley. So we either need more pulley or we need more blower. But let's show you how we fixed it. I didn't have a pulley here, but I had the next best thing. Okay, right off the bat, there was no way after putting all the time and effort in that I put into making this combination work and making the supercharger bolt on and actually line up and do everything that it needed to do to run on this LS motor, there's no way I was gonna finish this dyno test with a supercharged combination making less power than the NA combination. And since I didn't have pulleys from back when I was doing all the Ram Air technology stuff, I didn't have pulleys or, or new snouts or anything, we did the next best thing. We installed nitrous. I know it's easy, but it always works. So we installed a nitrous express kit, a wet fogger nozzle in the inlet tube in our custom inlet tube that we made for this app, specifically for this application, obviously. It had a radius entry on it and had a hole drilled in it that was tapped to accept the fogger nozzle. And in that fogger nozzle, we installed a 52 nitrous jet and a 28 fuel jet. 
and activated this baby and take a look at what happened after we installed the Nitrous Express. This is probably the best like blower pulley <laughs> install ever. Makes a lot more power than any blower pulley. Look at that, boom, ton of power. The power output with the Nitrous Express kit jumped up from 312 or 313 horsepower to 442 horsepower. So that's a sizable jump and it increased the power output everywhere. Now, it's also important to note that we ran all of this stuff on pump gas on 91 octane California stuff even, even the nitrous. We retarded the timing by four degrees, the air fuel ratio was nice, and actually, it was actually a little bit richer than we would normally run it, but it was plenty safe. It was down at 11.1 or 11.2. You can see that we, the nitrous hit made less power down low too, even before we activated the nitrous. That's because we took the timing out everywhere just to make sure that it was gonna be plenty safe. So the cure to not having enough boost from your supercharger is to add nitrous. After seeing the results, I can't help but be a little disappointed. I mean, I had high hopes for a little M90 supercharger. My plan was to run the motor NA, then using our super cool adapter bracket, install the M90, run the supercharge, and make even more power. Then I had a surprise for you guys. I was gonna install a single turbo setup blow through the supercharger in a cool compound system. I mean, how cool is that? That M90 had other plans. Unfortunately, it couldn't support the power level we were looking for, but that's why I ran the nitrous. I mean, I was gonna have all this work go for nothing. I didn't wanna have this combination make less than NA power, so I hit it with the squeeze. Finally, we had some power. But what do you guys think? Should I keep doing testing with the M90? I mean, maybe try smaller pulleys and more boost maybe a ported throttle body, or even a ported blow. What about running two M90s? I mean, would a guy really do that? It would certainly support more power, but would guys really go to the effort? I know the blowers are cheap in the junkyard, but would they do that instead of maybe two eBay turbos? Let me know what you guys think. But for now, I gotta get all this stuff off because I got some turbo testing to do. Really cool turbo testing. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all that stuff so I can keep doing this crazy testing. Thanks for watching.